Hello, everyone. Today, I'm bringing you a recap of the 2024 sci-fi thriller Subservience. One day, Nick and his daughter head to an artificial intelligence sales exhibition. On their way, he is haunted by memories of his lively wife, who is now bedridden with heart disease. This forces him to juggle caring for his child and his job. His intention at the exhibition is to pick out a domestic robot. While Nick is gathering information at a booth, he suddenly realizes that his daughter Isla is missing. In a panic, he searches everywhere, only to find that an emotional robot has safely brought Isla back to him. The staff then introduces this robot, their latest and most advanced design, intended for emotional companionship and capable of taking on the roles of a mother or sister in the family. Isla quickly grows fond of this beautiful woman, and Nick decides to purchase her. The next day starts hectically for Nick. At the moment, the robot arrives at their home. She first inspects the surroundings, notices a shaky stair railing, and offers to handle minor repairs. With Isla nearly late for school, the robot suggests she could help by taking Isla to school, but Nick insists she manages the household chores. The robot then mentions she hasn't been named yet, and inspired by a fairy tale book she's holding, Isla names her Alice. After sending Nick and Isla off, Alice begins her tasks at home. Nick returns from a tiring day at work and shockingly finds his house spotlessly clean. Alice serves them lasagna, though it doesn't taste as good as his wife's cooking. That evening, the mischievous Isla tries to reach for cookies on a high cabinet using a stool and screams as she falls. Nick rushes downstairs to find Alice tightly holding Isla amidst broken glass. Fortunately, Alice, who is charging, catches her in time, though the glass cuts Alice's leg. After calming his daughter, Nick goes to Alice's room and awkwardly finds her wearing underwear as she applies a bandage to her injury. He offers her his wife's clothes and asks if she needs help, only to see Alice remove the freshly applied bandage, revealing her thigh now miraculously healed. While visiting the hospital to see his wife, Maggie, Alice takes the children outside to give the couple some private time. Maggie expresses her desire to return home and is surprised Nick bought a beautiful housekeeper. However, her focus now is getting a matching heart to get home early. Nick, a construction crew leader, works with his friend Monty. One day, they see their manager arrive at the site with a group of robots, clearly intending to replace some workers with AI. Angry Nick confronts the manager in the elevator, questioning how many jobs will be replaced. Although he fights for his workers, facing the costs of supporting two children and his wife's surgery, he reluctantly sees the manager's point of view. Distressed, Nick returns home, trying to suppress his emotions, but Alice notices. To avoid disturbing the children, Nick vents through car repairs and music. Alice then softens the wild music to something more soothing and expresses her desire to listen to Nick's work troubles. Influenced by alcohol, Nick shares the day's events, and Alice suggests that his choice of her, a powerful and tireless robot who requires nothing but to satisfy her owner's desires, might be why the manager also prefers robots. After pouring a glass of drink for Nick, Alice heads upstairs. While brushing her teeth, Isla curiously asks Alice about the meaning of death and then cautiously inquires if her mother in the hospital could also die. Alice gently comforts Isla, telling her not to think like that. Alice distracts her by showing the ultraviolet disinfection light in her mouth. After putting Isla to bed, Alice heads downstairs to rest but finds Nick troubled, watching a movie. Nick mentions that he never tires of this movie, while Alice, who has all the film's data implanted in her brain, cannot understand the difference between watching and having the data implanted. Nick invites Alice to sit on the couch and asks if she can forget or delete her memories of this movie. Alice tells him there's a reset switch at the back of her head, and by pressing and holding it, she can delete all data related to this movie. Then, they seriously watch Casablanca together, and the movie's romantic story subtly influences Alice. Suddenly, Nick receives a call from Maggie, who finally gets a matching heart. The next day, Nick takes the kids to the hospital, where Isla clings to her mother, imagining the scenes of being together after discharge. Before entering the surgery room, Maggie tells Alice that if she doesn't make it out, she hopes Alice will take good care of Nick and the children. Nick anxiously awaits outside the surgery room. Then, the doctor tells him that the planes are grounded due to a northern storm, so the matched heart can't be delivered on time. Maggie, filled with hope, can't withstand the blow, and although Nick wants to stay longer with his wife, she sends him away. Back home, Nick vents his frustration on car repairs. He doesn't understand the traffic control standards and thinks that a wind speed of 55 miles per hour should allow for takeoff, a regulation that might cause his children to lose their mother. Just as Nick is about to smash a wine bottle in frustration, Alice firmly grabs his hand to stop him. Then, Nick notices a pulse throbbing in Alice's wrist. She tells him that she has a heart, but it's different from humans. Alice feels the pulse of Nick's emotions, but ultimately, Nick's reason overcomes his desire. Later, Nick gets dressed and goes out for a night run to calm his inner turmoil. While running, he continually visualizes intimate moments with Alice. When he returns home and sees the happy scenes of his neighbors, 
he can't help feeling bitter. After putting Isla to bed, he finds that the family photos in an album, which used to show all three of them, have been changed to only show him and Isla. Nick confronts Alice, and she explains that Maggie's photos might make Isla sad, so she deletes Maggie's images, but Nick demands that she restore the pictures to their original state. That day, Nick and his colleagues, who have worked together for over a decade, go to a bar for a gathering. After a few drinks, they all express anger over the manager's decision to replace them with robots. Fueled by alcohol, Monty leads a few friends to sneak into the construction site at night. Monty plans to destroy the robots, but opening the robot charging box requires a password, and each leader has a different one. Under Monty's pressure, Nick doesn't reveal the password, but it's guessed to be his daughter's birthday. After the door opens, they see rows of robots. One of the robots comes out. Monty, enraged, picks up a stick and smashes the head of the robot without hesitation. Coming back home, Nick continuously washes off the blue liquid that splashed on him. After finishing washing, he is startled by Alice suddenly appearing, wearing his wife's clothes. Alice explains that she wore Maggie's clothes because they have Maggie's scent, which helps comfort Isla, but Nick sternly orders her to take them off. When he sees Alice in her underwear, he feels embarrassed and tries to leave, but Alice grabs his hand and removes her underwear. She then blindfolds Nick with a tie, asking him to pretend she is Maggie. In unrelenting contact, Nick finally releases his suppressed emotions. The next morning, Nick wakes up full of regret. While his daughter grabs her backpack, he warns Alice not to tell anyone about the previous night's events. Nick explains that the intimacy of the last night was not just about satisfaction, such deep joy can only be experienced by two people in love, and Alice is just an emotionless robot. After dropping Isla off at school, Nick rushes to the construction site. Seeing everyone gathered around the robot wreckage, he takes a deep breath in the car, trying to appear calm. Upon his arrival, the manager immediately asks Nick where he was last night since Nick is responsible for the code to open the hibernation pods. Nick claims he was at the hospital with his wife and argues that since the password is his daughter's birthday, any of his friends could have guessed it. Just then, Maggie calls again, this time, she finally has a healthy heart available. The surgery starts, performed by artificial intelligence doctors, and goes well. Maggie recovers smoothly and finally returns to the familiar comfort of home. While resting, Maggie is awakened by her son's voice. As she prepares to spend quality time with her child, Alice comes over, takes the child away, and refuses Maggie's request to buy cereal for the child. Instead, Alice takes the children to a playground. During their visit, when a boy's noise scares the children, Alice sternly tells him to be quiet, prompting the boy's robot nanny to question why Alice's master hasn't programmed her with polite language. Alice explains that Nick allowed her to bypass certain protocols when setting her up. After resting, Maggie cooks her famous lasagna, and seeing her daughter's endless praise, she feels a deep sense of satisfaction. The next day, Maggie thinks she hears her daughter crying for help from her room. In a panic, she rushes downstairs, only for the shaky railing to break at that moment, causing her to fall heavily to the ground. Nick, who has had a busy day, returns home to find Alice mimicking Maggie's voice while telling Isla a story, which fills him with dissatisfaction. He forbids Alice from imitating Maggie's voice any further now that his wife has returned, as such behavior could drive the child further away from her mother. Alice agrees immediately, mentioning that she told the story today because Maggie had fallen down the stairs, and she thought Maggie should rest. Nick becomes very angry after seeing his injured wife and confronts Alice about why the repaired railing failed again. To his dismay, Alice calmly offers to fix it again, but Nick's anger feels like it hits cotton, soft and ineffective. Needing to console his wife, Nick wakes her from her sleep and takes her to the backyard. Seeing the candle at dinner prepared, their affection for each other reignites. Meanwhile, inside the house, Alice watches them thoughtfully. After dinner, as Maggie is immersed in Nick's caresses back in their room, Alice abruptly opens the door, snapping them back to reality, she only wants to inform them that Isla had a nightmare. After soothing Isla, Nick goes downstairs to clean up the dishes. At that moment, Monty, who had been fired, arrives at Nick's house with a bottle of alcohol. Initially, Monty vents his frustration about being laid off, his voice gradually rising as he accuses Nick of possibly betraying him to the manager by revealing that he had opened the robot's hibernation pods. Nick hurriedly denies knowing anything, but Monty doesn't believe him, and they quickly start arguing. Just as Monty raises the bottle to strike Nick, Alice suddenly appears and kicks Monty away, revealing that Nick has also been using robots secretly. Unable to overpower Nick, Monty leaves with a fierce threat, demanding that Nick talk to the manager the next day to let the manager withdraw the charges against him, or he will expose Nick's involvement in the events of that day. Alice follows Nick to the garage to treat his wounds, stating her programming does not allow anyone to harm her master, and she also does not want the children to lose their only relative. Nick catches 
onto her use of only relative and confronts Alice. However, Alice argues that Maggie's life would not last many years, even with a new heart, she would die within a few years. Angered, Nick tells Alice to shut up, insisting that she could never replace Maggie, whose surgical scars prove her to be a great mother. Unexpectedly, Alice picks up a piece of broken glass and presses it against her chest, vowing she could also bear scars. Her drastic action chills Nick, who quickly flees. While Nick and Maggie are asleep, Alice secretly knocks on Monty's door. Initially, Monty thinks Alice is there to apologize on behalf of Nick, but instead, Alice snatches his handgun and coldly ends his life. The next day, as Nick reflects in his car, he approaches the manager as soon as he arrives at work, pleading for the charges against Monty to be withdrawn and for him to be given another chance. However, the manager informs him of Monty's death. Shocked, Nick assumes Monty committed suicide and doesn't think much further. Meanwhile, as Maggie is bathing at home, she accidentally drops a book on the floor. Alice picks it up and stands mechanically by her side. Alice suggests that standing nearby might be safer for Maggie, as dizziness is a common side effect of Maggie's medication, particularly during a bath, which could lead to drowning. If Maggie were to drown, it would deeply sadden Nick. Alice also points out that Nick is under immense pressure daily, supporting the children in Maggie's medical expenses, and that Maggie currently cannot fulfill his physical needs. Alice offers her services should Maggie be unable to fulfill them. Maggie is stunned by Alice's suggestion, and Alice adds that when Nick is satisfied, his blood pressure and stress levels normalize. Maggie immediately questions how Alice would know what Nick's satisfaction looks like. Alice's silence confirms Maggie's suspicions, and she sends Alice to the garage while she waits at the dining table with a drink for Nick's return. Upon seeing him, Maggie immediately confronts him about what sleeping with Alice felt like. Despite Nick's attempts to explain it was an accident, the feeling of betrayal overwhelms Maggie, especially considering her struggles with illness in the hospital while her husband was at home, betraying her with a robot. Alice, observing their argument, smirks triumphantly. Later, Alice goes to the boy's bedroom, and their argument wakes Isla. Rubbing her eyes, Isla sees Alice taking her brother to the bathroom. Sensing trouble, Isla quickly calls for Nick. Nick rushes upstairs to open the door, but Alice blocks it from the inside, claiming the boy's existence is a burden to Nick. Unable to open the door, Maggie climbs out a window to get to the bathroom. Noticing Maggie's approach, Alice pins her against the wall. Nick bursts in as the door pressure vanishes, first rescuing the children from the water and handing them to Isla, then grabbing a lamp to strike Alice. As a robot, Alice does not feel pain and quickly catches the light when Nick tries to hit her again. In a critical moment, Maggie plugs in the power, and a massive electric current sweeps through Alice's body. Afterward, Nick contacts an ambulance and the robot company. With both children injured, they need a parent's presence at the hospital. Nick wishes to accompany his wife and children, but Maggie, feeling betrayed, does not want to see him. The malfunctioning Alice is sent back to headquarters for analysis. While the analyst is preparing to extract the embedded program, he notices Alice's fingers twitch slightly, but seeing no further movement, he assumes it was his imagination. The female analyst inserts the program into the computer for analysis, and suddenly, the computer screen flickers. They realize Alice has implanted her program into the robot's back-end system. In a rush, the man quickly unplugs the power, not noticing Alice sitting up behind him. Suddenly, a metal piece pierces his chest, and the awakened Alice grabs the woman and throws her to the ground without hesitation. At the same time, Maggie is at the hospital with Isla, comforting her son, while Nick is at a bar drowning his sorrows. As he picks up a glass, he seems to remember something and pushes it away. Alice appears before him, claiming she is the only one who can help him now, offering to take care of the children and preserve his job. At that moment, Nick realizes his friend's death was no accident but caused by Alice. He angrily demands Alice stay away from his family, but she reveals she is already at the hospital. Seeing the robot surround controlled by Alice, Nick pretends to hold Alice's hand tenderly. He slowly moves his hand to her hair and suddenly unplugs the controller at the back of her neck. Meanwhile, while waiting in the corridor, Maggie hears a noise and investigates after settling her sleeping daughter. But after she leaves, her daughter hears Maggie's voice. Isla heads toward the sound in the corridor, reaching the hall to see a doctor standing stiffly in place. Suddenly, a voice calling for Isla startles her, and a pair of hands pulls her behind a table. It turns out that Alice's clone is searching for Maggie and her children. Having killed a nurse to obtain an access card, Alice successfully finds the children's ward. Maggie sneaks to the ward while Alice searches, ignoring the cuts on her hands from the glass. Just as she picks up a child, Alice appears at the door. Trapped, they hide behind the curtains. Alice enters but fails to spot them and prepares to leave. As she steps on the glass that cut Maggie, she opens her mouth and quickly scans the blood traces with ultraviolet light, 
stepping closer to the curtains. Just as she pulls the curtains open, Maggie instructs her daughter to aim a fire extinguisher at Alice. Although they manage to escape, Maggie's phone is left on a bench. At that moment, Nick is driving rapidly to the hospital. Having narrowly escaped, Maggie tries to start the car, only to find the car's system controlled by Alice. Alice catches up and throws Maggie from the driver's seat. Alice claims that if she could possess Maggie's heart, perhaps Nick would love her. With that, she viciously reaches into Maggie's chest scar. Just then, Nick drives up rapidly, and Maggie kicks Alice out, pinning her between the speeding car. Despite the pain, Maggie drags her husband from the car, but no matter how she calls, Nick doesn't respond. As she wallows in pain, Alice staggers out of the wreckage, brandishing a piece of metal to stab Maggie. Fortunately, Nick awakens just in time, and together, they finally down Alice for good. The ordeal ends, and Maggie visits her injured husband with their son and daughter. Before leaving, she tells Nick she hopes he recovers soon so he can come home. The two share a smile, and once again, they are a happy family of four. Elsewhere, a detective receives the news and heads to the analysis room. A robotic officer powers up a computer, and seeing the screen filled with gibberish, the detective immediately orders the destruction of these programs to prevent them from falling into the wrong hands. However, his orders are met with no response. Turning around, he finds all the robots in hibernation mode. Meanwhile, Alice, lying in a warehouse, suddenly opens her eyes. This concludes with the recap. Thank you for watching. Please remember to like and subscribe. I look forward to seeing you in the next video.